forget to like, and share, and subscribe. Hello, family. At the end of the day, Mercedes, I'll come before you again to bring your message. Well, today is Monday. I believe it's the 17th or it's the 18th. One of those days. Okay. But I just got off from work doing, uh, as I've told you in the past, substitute teaching, which I really thoroughly enjoy having the opportunity to not only teach academics, but also to, to teach the spirit of our students. And speaking of spirit today, at the end of this day, I uh, kind of just wanted to um, talk about some of the things that happened today, or an experience that I had today. I'm not going to talk too long, but uh, in light of some of the things that are going on right now in Alabama, and especially uh, not far from the hometown that I grew up in, which was Tuskegee. But I believe this is called Daveville or Davisville or what have you. It's in the news, national news, where there were uh, students, um, I guess we would call this a, a mass shooting or a mass killing. Um, and what it brings to me is that uh, the thought of just um, anger, you know, that our students may be dealing with just anger, pent up anger. And I kind of thought about that today with a couple of students I had, I had to uh, speak strongly to. And um, as I always do this thing that I call X10, and that's where the student has to come outside of the class and, um, and count to 10 and then come back in. It gives them time to kind of cool down because I never know what our students are dealing with and what their, you know, what their lives are like what's at home. And I've dealt with a lot of students in my uh, years of teaching uh, to understand that sometimes students have what we call misdirected anger. And this particular student has been uh, on a very regular basis, you know, because I I substitute teach and I go from different classes, you know, every time I go, maybe a different school sometimes, but lately I've been at a particular school. And uh, I noticed this student just angry. And and I say, most people probably was interpreted as hatred toward themselves, or like in the case of this student, hatred toward me. But I thought and I realized that this student has absolutely no reason whatsoever to hate me. And I asked her, and when I took her outside because she had been so disrespectful in the classroom, I brought her outside of the class and said, why do you hate me so much? And she did not even deny that she hated me. And she just went to deflect. Is that because I put all the papers on the floor? I said, no. I said, I've been watching you quite a while. I said, I noticed you get up, you walk out of the room without asking. I said, I've always told you that usually if you ask me to uh, go out to use the restroom or get water or whatever, all you gotta do is ask because I'm treating you as a young adult with respect. And I suppose if you have to say you have to use the restroom, I will allow you to use the restroom. I said, but every time you do that, that will be a test. But this particular student has had just an attitude the entire time, just an attitude the entire time that I've been, uh, had the opportunity to run in, into her. And I realized this student is, this student is angry. And they're not angry with me. They don't even know me. I don't know them, don't even know their names. But I just remember her because of her disrespectful disposition on a regular basis. And I pick up on that because I pick up on the spirits of people. And uh, that just comes because I'm, you know, always seeking to understand, you know, what other people and the young people are dealing with. Because they got feelings, they got, you know, they get angry and stuff, but maybe not know how to deal with it. And I was just thinking about the person who went and, and 
and killed all these people in this mass shooting. What kind of anger must be that? Because I felt like this student has some anger and it's some misdirected anger and they don't know me, but who is it that maybe I remind them of? Of what is happened in, I noticed a lot of students, a lot of our uh, families today do not have a man in the household. So they don't understand the language of a male. They don't understand the tone of that our voices. They don't understand a lot of things, so they may be misdirecting anger because they're angry because their dad's out there. They're, they're angry because their dad is there and he's abusive or whatever. But I'm a very uh, uh, firm person, but I'm very fair. And I make sure that I make my students understand that they'll always be able to. I'm, I'm looking for the best version of them and the best thing for them to uh when they come into my classroom, I let them know uh, that this is a place where you can be you. You can relax, you can be you, but I only ask that you give me your best version of you. You get a chance to display what you look like as a mature, responsible person. And I continue to dwell, drill this on a regular basis. And when I talk with this student, uh, I think I really got through, I hope I did, because I think she stopped and realized I'm not angry with this, this man. This man has not had done anything to me, hadn't disrespected, hadn't spoken strongly to you. I have rules in the classroom, but they're not rules that the students, the rest of the students have jumped right in and just do whatever I ask, you know. We have this little sign language thing that they're learning how to speak without even talking to me. And uh, we, we have that going on in the classroom. And um, it's just, it's a wonderful experience, but also I get a chance to really listen with my eyes. It's what's going on in my classroom to see what's going on with the different students. And I've seen a lot of things. And when I see this type of anger that is happening in our communities, in our society, there's a lot of pent up frustration and anger that is out there. And our children need to talk. Even I think the parents need to be talked to because the parents basically are children. They're children raising children. And this just seems to be a repetitive thing that just keeps passing and passing. Undealt with anger, undealt with, um, we never know what these students bring to school and have dealt with. So, <clears throat> I am gonna wait and I hope that this student can come back. I told him, I said, go home and think about what you're doing. Think about what you're saying. Think about this angle that you have, it's obvious. I said, but it's not about me. It's somewhere else and only you can find it. Our students need to be in counseling. These students need to be able to find out what is going on with them? And then we need to stop and think about things like food and all these other things that could be um, causing our students, even causing adults to act with such irresponsibleness. And so, and all I see is pent up anger sometimes. And that's not only with the, it seems to be more prevalent now, that I'm dealing with students now and I'm looking at the females that are really supposed to be a lot more feminine. I'm seeing this masculine, strong fight. I mean, I'm seeing fights in this, you know, in, in situations that shouldn't. Uh, when we are teaching our, our children um, principles, that would not lead to violence, for it to be so strong and so prevalent in our culture, it sounds like this is not necessarily the problem of the students. This is where we as adults have dropped the ball. We have dropped the ball. Some of us are, are teaching some things that is not good for our culture. And so you have, I, said, I told the student today, <laughs> it was kind of funny, uh, but she said, I'm calling my mama. I said, you can call Jesus, but you will not get the results that you're thinking you're going to get from that. I think the next time I tell them, look, Jesus is already here listening to you. <laughs> okay, so 
Um, but I just wonder what did she think her parents were going to do if they're coming down and then I talk to them and I say, your child is speaking this way, that way, doing this thing, doing that thing. Um, I wonder what the parents would say because they probably, probably don't even know that their child would do such a thing. Okay, and so we as teachers, you know, I've taught for over 25 years, so I'm used to this. It's just that I have so much more wisdom now, and now I'm trying to deal with this with a different angle. Instead of always getting on the child and or the student and treating them like a child, you know, grow them up, bring them up, speak to them, and let them be able to speak back in their adultness, if there's such a word, so that they can get a feel for what it means to be responsible for the things that you say, the things that you do. These students, um, the best word I can come up with is angry, angry. So it is going to be my prayer at the end of this day and the end of my week and these days that our students would be granted some peace, some peace. And I pray that the teachers and all of us who are in authoritative positions will stop and realize that our children are responding because somewhere we dropped the ball and we know that we have. And the answer is not always, is not always uh, <laughs> this. Now it may be time for us to be able to talk and let them talk and we listen and we listen. Maybe we can win something that seems to just be out of control. But, and the student may respond, not that necessarily they may be right, but just to be able to get it out on a level of trying to speak in their most diplomatic way so that they can learn to calm down and get some results and at least get us to hear and see what we need to do in order to create another environment for them. This is so hard for me to go into schools now and I'm seeing policemen all, even though they're needed, seeing policemen in the school system is almost like what I remember when I worked in DOC. You know, you got the policemen all there all the time and though if they're crim criminals at that point, I suppose so, but these are our children. And so that's saying that they are leaning toward criminal behavior when you lose respect, not only for yourself, but for society, for adults, you know, because sometimes even we as adults can still be operating as children and this is not good for our culture. We have to learn how to grow up and how to listen, to learn, and to learn how to lead better, okay? Well, that's all I have for right now, but today still, even with that, it was a good day. And at the end of this day, and the end of the things that I've learned today, I'm ready.